Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. Today we're going to be talking about palpation of the hip and we're going to be feeling for tone, laxity, swelling, deformity, but perhaps most importantly pain, as this can potentially tell us the most about our patient's condition. So as to not slow your video down, we're not going to be comparing the left and right sides, but of course in clinical practice we always want you to compare the left and right sides. So let's get to our main video, let's get clinical. So let's go through our hip palpation in the anterior view. So a key marker to look for is the ASIS. So what you can do is trace your fingers, feel the iliac crest, and then trace it down until you're gonna hit a bit of a corner and bump where it suddenly drops a little bit. So just run your thumb around that and get familiar with that area. Now, this area is not only a useful bony landmark for finding sartorius, which we're going to do in a second, but it's also a commonly used place to check for leg length discrepancy. So you can start off measuring from there and bring it down and uh, tape measure down to the lateral malleolus and compare left to right. So from the ASIS, all you're going to do is just roll down so we're on the soft tissue. And that is going to be where our sartorius origin is positioned. If you want to feel it, a bit more easily, you can bring the hip up into a little bit more flexion and then you'll be able to roll around the tendon quite easily. From there, if you wanted to, you can come a little bit more medial off that tendon and you will be more onto the, the rectus femoris, so we can find an aspect of it there. Let's go back to our ASIS, so we find the crest, roll down, bumpy bit. If we go approximately one or two centimetres out lateral, more like towards the two centimeters and drop down another two, just on this kind of triangular corner is going to be where the tensor fascia lata muscle sits. And we can palpate in there too, checking for tenderness and the usual stuff. Tensor fascia lata is gonna have an impact on the iliotibial band, so we can trace this down the side. Sometimes it's easier to go more distal and locate the band and work your way up, so you can do that or you can just start from around here, roll your fingers until you find the band, which you'll be able to appreciate with your fingers and run that down. And that might be quite irritable in someone that has a sort of ITB syndrome, that typical thing that's normally to do with um, uh, an overactivity or an inactivity, something to do with this lateral line that's been irritated or compromised. So what else can we, palpate for around the hip in the anterior view. So we can also look at the inguinal ligament. So this is going to be more to do with uh, the hernias type presentation. This one you're going to need some clinical justification and permission from your patient. Um, effectively what you need to do is come to your ASIS again and if you feel in you'll be able to feel like uh, a quality of tissue like a like a tube that's sitting in basically it's the groin line and what you can do is just roll and palpate through it but you're only going to be doing that if it's indicated. And finally, on a similar vein of needing permission and subjective signs is palpating adductor tendons. So if our patient is complaining of a groin pain, the best way we found to, to practice palpation of this is to first ask the patient to feel and palpate the injured region themselves. So let's say they point to here. And then with their permission, we can then feel that area and see if it's painful. And we could also confirm it if it's an adductor problem by asking them to do a resisted adduction movement at the hip. And we can see if it starts to contract and lift that area. That would give us another clue. Okay, so let's go through our posterior hip palpation. So unlike other areas of the body, which could potentially present with redness, swelling, bruising, bony deformity, we're not likely to see that in and around the, the hip SIJ re uh, region, unless there's been a particular obvious trauma. So we're not really gonna see those signs, but what we are gonna be feeling for with our palpation is for pain, tenderness, tone, um, and whether things feel sticky or adherent with the different fibers. And you'll get a sense of that the more you practice and feel. And obviously if you reproduce the patient's pain, you're onto a winner in terms of helping to understand the clinical impression. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to look for is the PSIS. So the way we're going to find that is just have a feel onto the ilium, which you can feel at the side, and you can just trace it down until you get to a little bump. 
Now, if you do this in standing, you'll normally see sort of two dimples on people about here, and that is roughly in and around where the PSIS is. So that's our first marker. And it tends to be um, tender in people, one, because they either have an SIJ dysfunction, or two, it's so closely approximated to L5-S1, that's a common area for irritation anyway. The next thing we're going to look to is the ischial tuberosity. Now, you're not going to be doing this routinely, but if your patient is presenting with buttock pain, then you need their permission, and then we can uh, have a palpate of that and see what's going on there. So you're going to be looking under the gluteal fold. And this is where the hamstrings are going to insert, or the origin, however you want to look at it. So you find the gluteal fold, stick your thumb up there, and you're going to roll, and you should be able to roll onto that bone, and that is the ischial tuberosity. The next one we're going to talk about is just the sacrum. So we can find our L5-S1 mark from coming in from the crests, which you can check out on our other videos. And we're going to trace down. And we know that just at the bottom of the tailbone, and um, right on the coccyx, just more proximal to that is where our sacrum is going to be. So now we have our sacrum as our marker here. So now we know where our sacrum is and our ischial tuberosity. Sorry, that's the right place here. Um, we can palpate along this path, which is where the sacrotuberous ligament is going to be. So we feel down, we palpate, we find one marker. We find under here the ischial tuberosity. This line here is going to be the sacrotuberous ligament, so we can palpate in there. This can get very tight and irritable if someone has a dysfunction in the, poster, uh, the posterior lateral sling system, which is sort of as the muscle runs to biceps femoris crosses into the sacrotuberous ligament through the SIJ and to the opposite side. You can always check out sort of anatomy trains and other things for more information on that, but generally it is quite common to have irritation around that area. Next, let's move on to the greater trochanter. Um, we'll be covering this in the lateral view as well, but the greater trochanter is sitting on the lateral aspect around the femur and it's a prominent bump there. So we can feel around there. Very, very tender uh, for greater trochanteric pain syndrome and for all the different gluteal muscles that are going to insert into it. And not to mention piriformis. Which brings us to our next bit. So we know where our sacrum is because we can run our fingers down and find the coccyx come proximal to the sacrum. And we know where our greater trochanter is. So this is where the piriformis is going to sit. So we can palpate along its length and see if that's irritated. The last one to check out is the sciatic nerve. And where we're going to find that roughly approximated is we're going to find the greater trochanter and we're going to find the ischial tuberosity. Now somewhere in this region we are going to be able to uh, put pressure on the sciatic nerve and it will feel kind of nasty to the patient because we are putting pressure on a nerve that it will feel a bit icky to them and particularly hypersensitized if there's irritation to it. You're not going to, per se, be able to feel the quality of the nerve, but we are going to be approximated to it to elicit that response. And that takes care of our key areas of posterior hip palpation. So let's go through our hip palpation in the lateral view. So there's two key areas we're looking at. One is the greater trochanter, and the rest is the tissue running up this way. So the first thing we're going to do is find this bony prominence on the, the lateral aspect of the hip. This is our greater trochanter. We're going to palpate that. It's likely to be tender in persons with great, greater trochanteric pain syndrome. And also, it can be painful from being referred from the joint itself, so potentially in osteoarthritic patients or those with an internal derangement in the hip. From here, we're going to roll out posture laterally. And this is going to be where tendons are inserting. And this is a very, very uh, painful area with people with greater trochanteric pain syndrome. We've also got uh, a bursa that sits under here, which can also be inflamed and irritated alongside it. From here, we're going to be thinking about palpating the tissue upwards towards the sacrum. And as we feel through here, we're going to be checking in on the approximation of the glute med, the glute min, and some deep lateral rotators as we come through here. And these are very commonly irritated as they are normally supposed to be a stabilizing role, but they can often take over too many uh, jobs and they'll become short, tight and irritable. And you, this might match up with your passive range of motion testing, which you can check out on our other videos to see if there's restriction in the hip joint due to a, a muscular problem. 
So here are the key points to summarize this video on palpation of the hip joint. Break down your palpation of the hip into an anterior, lateral, and posterior view, ensuring you compare affected and unaffected sides. When palpating your patient, look for deformity, swelling, laxity, tone, and most importantly, pain. You can also look for signs of specific pathology in each view, as mentioned throughout the video. And that concludes our video on palpation of the hip. From here, we'd suggest you look at our other videos in the clinical physio catalogue, such as active range of motion testing or resisted testing. Thanks, that's all from us. We'll see you again soon on Clinical Physio.